Hey there, in today's video, I am giving you another way to begin. Now, I do kind of call it like a formula, but it's more about providing almost like structure, like I'm having a hard time starting, so here's some structure that will help me begin. So years ago, it used to be when I could do nothing else, I would make circles because guess what? Anybody can make a circle. So now I'm doing kind of squares or frames and painting inside. It's a variation on the circle that I started with because I think we all need a go-to, something that we can do when we feel uninspired, when we feel just out of sorts, but we know we need to do something because it fills us up and our, we, we just are better moving into the day when we've done a little bit of art, a, used a little bit of our creativity. And honestly, you know, it doesn't always have to be art that fills us up. It can be, we can be creative in so many different ways, but that is for a different time. Today, I am just showing you another way, another simple way when you're really struggling to break out of that just paint some simple shapes and make some marks and you might be surprised with the result and you might be surprised with where that might lead you. So I just wanna encourage you to begin. So let's, um, without further ado, let's get started. I have one other f formula and I don't know why I'm laughing when I say that because it's not really a formula, but I gotta say, I have sometimes to trick myself into to, okay, all I have to do is this X, Y, Z and, and something will happen. And it's kind of like for me, tricking myself into going and onto the treadmill or whatever it happened, uh, stair climber. I have to kind of trick myself into it. And it's sometimes art is the same way. Like my mind is tr plays tricks on me. So, but today I'm going to show you one other way so that you have a couple of, of I, options in your pocket. But here's the thing. I want you to make them your own. I want you to find your, well, I might as well be mixing colors while I'm chit chatting. Uh, I want you to figure out like what exactly is your shape, what exactly is your kind of go-to formula when you're you're not feeling it. And um, you know it, 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 it's gonna vary for each of us for sure. So uh, okay so I got this kind of muddy green because you know I like the dull and muddy colors and you might like a bright color and you go for that. So basically I have this page that is crazy and I just I didn't even know where to start, so I thought I'm gonna go back to my formula, which is kind of painting a square. And it can be off center or like not exact, and I kind of painted this side exact, which I don't really like exactness. But, uh, and maybe I don't want that middle quite so big, so let's do this. I got a lot of gray there, let's, so. Anyway, something like that. So now I have something on there but maybe I want to grab a color shaper or not a color shaper, a mark making tool and just kind of make some marks because I want it and those other colors pop through the bottom. And then for the middle, uh, I'm going to, let's go over here and just have a lighter color. Maybe grab a little bit of that uh, burnt sienna. Actually, I didn't tell you what colors. I started with a burnt sienna, a black, a chromium oxide green, a neutral gray and a white. So... Let's see what happens. I'm gonna get a real neutral, kind of muddy neutral color here. And let's see, let's bring a little bit more of that in. So it can be whatever you know works for you, obviously. obviously. I'm not there. You get to choose your own colors and hopefully they're colors that you love and that you want. I don't like this color. <laughs> I can tell you right now, I don't like it. So let's, I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna work with maybe making more of a gray color. Bring in some green. Now I, a lot of times limit, well I always limit, well I try to always limit my color palette because if I have all the options, I did a video a while ago and um, we're using soft pastels and I opened, the, I left the whole box open and that was a big mistake. I never do that. And so, and then I was on camera and I just, I couldn't choose and it was really tricky. And But here's what I'm gonna say is that was a lesson well learned. You don't, you, you can't start with your whole, um, with a whole 
bin. You, you need to limit it. So that's why I always choose three or four colors. I try to mix it up a little bit and see what, what happens. Um, because I think it's easy to get sucked into, oh, let's bring in an orange, let's bring in a purple, whatever. And then it just becomes crazy making like I did underneath, that one underneath. But here's the thing, if you're just starting a page, crazy making is a great idea. Okay, so now I'm going to, um, okay, so this is kind of, my formula is kind of a square with a box in the middle, different size. And let's, um, let's see if we can do a little mark on the on it let's get in some of this green in here just to kind of make the black a little more interesting maybe even a little gray and let's see what we can do so i'm gonna say i'm gonna be loose with my <laughs> brush because it's easy to kind of tense up like i just did right there so and because things aren't they aren't dry um then i'm going to end up with some muddy colors there. So what I would do, maybe if you are, if this happens to you, you can wait, let it dry, and then uh, come back and, and repaint over it, if it's something you like. If for me, it's just a formula, a way to get started, then, you know, maybe I don't worry about it. So here's the other thing I'm going to do. I have a smaller paintbrush, and I'm just seeing what I can make here. And I'm gonna make some really subtle marks with this little, slightly l lighter green. And it's just gonna add a little bit of interest, making it, you know, it's very quiet, it's very subtle, but it's just another way to add something in. And again, this isn't necessarily going to be a finished product, although it could be. It's just kind of a formula like, I like the look of this. So a box, a color in the middle, and then a swirl or something on the top. And then you kind of could come in and change it up if you want. Obviously, I could have gone and covered all the yellow around the edge. I kind of like a little bit of that peeking through. I could add a, some lines here and let some of this pop through which I'm gonna do a little bit. And if I don't like that, I can bring in a color shaper and kind of go over it, which sometimes it's nice not to have the full lines. Sometimes I like to, um, let's say I, I wanna fix this real quick before the paint, there you go. I just, and then I can bring that paint and just kind of swirl it here and there. So there's just a lot of things you can do and it's not about, it's just, Another way to get get moving, get your hand and arms in the in the in the process of moving. And for me, going okay, I'm going to paint a kind of a frame. And I'm going to paint something in the middle, and then I'm going to paint on top of that is a great way to start. I'm going to do one more of these, and just to, for an example. Okay, this page is very subtle. Doesn't have a lot on it. A little bit of texture. I've obviously cleaned my paintbrush off on it. So uh, when I make the square around the edge this time, I think I'm going to cover most of the white. Uh, just And then I'm going to use this um, Burnt Sienna, which I might need more of. I didn't really put that much out, but let's see what happens. It's kind of turning into more of a putty color, and that's fine. I kind of like that. It has some of the black in it from the paintbrush. Oh, it has the green in it from the paintbrush. So there you go. There's some interest. So yeah, if you don't like that, you definitely need to clean your paintbrush. You need to make sure, I'm gonna put a little bit more of this out um, because otherwise the colors will mix. And like I said, for me, I don't mind because I like a little bit of that mix, of, the, of, it, of it mixing together. I like the depth that, and the differences that it makes. I like the variation in color, but you know, that's not for everybody. And so again, this, this whole thing is about figuring out what you like and then making your own art. I'm just giving you some, some tips and suggestions when, I, when you're stuck. And definitely yours could be a different shape. It could be a different, a whole different, a whole different gig. So, um, okay, in the middle, what should we put in the middle? Maybe I'll do some of this gray and white. I guess there's some black there. Let's see what that looks like. Let me add a dab of green. Okay. 
I think color mixing. I was so scared of that when I first started because I was like, what, what does that mean? <laughs> what does that even mean? And how smart do you have to be? And basically, it's just mixing colors together and you don't have to be smart at all. You can just, you can just mix your colors however you want. And I think that's the cool thing is it just gets to be however you want it to be. It doesn't have to be what anybody else thinks is right or wrong. I'm sure I do a lot of things the way people typically would not do something. And so I, I don't know any different. So I just try and try and try and see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna use, I have like a, a chunky charcoal piece. I'm gonna do something with that. See if it'll go through. I'm not really sure if it will. I'm just gonna do, I was hoping, I was hoping to get something more aggressive. Let's see if I can do it by kind of, there we go. Cause it's not totally a big X. It's not totally dry, but I kind of like that effect. Okay, and I could take a, let me find a paintbrush that's wet over here that doesn't have much paint on it. And I can make that, uh, you know, not so powdery, well, obviously, and it's with the water. It is water soluble, so then it's not gonna float around. And so, okay. Then what I could do is uh, I could leave it because that's cool. Uh, I could add something else to it. I could, whatever. Let's. I like keeping it simple when I'm not sure. I'm, I'm having a hard time already getting started. So maybe I will just like before add some of those little marks. And then if I want to come back and do something else on top of this, or I want to completely change it, I can. But I can feel good about actually doing something. Like, okay, I'm actually working on something and I feel like, oh, I, this is fine. Okay, is it a masterpiece? No, <laughs> but it definitely has the feeling to me of like I've got a page and I like the marks I'm making and I like what's happening. Now see to me, those are a little bit too bright. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of this and see if I can darken that up a little bit. Because I don't like, I know, no contrast and value is important to not have it be this, you know, to have some variation in shape, in color, in lights and darks. But sometimes to me, if it's too much, I have a hard time with that because I'm drawn to less contrast, but there has to be some. So otherwise it's just completely boring. So I can keep making these if I want, um, or I can just keep them on this one side, whatever. Well, I guess since I'm here, I'll just keep, I'll just make a few more. Anyway, that kind of gives you the idea. And over here, I could do something else. I could scratch into it. I could do some just mark making. There's just so many different things I could do. But um, maybe I, this is actually graphite. Let's see if I can go back over that. Or maybe I do some graphite over here. Oh, I like that. See, you just, you don't know where it's gonna lead. Okay, that I like. Because it kind of looks, makes it look older. It, I don't know if, hopefully that translates a little bit onto the camera. And then, or onto the, yeah, from, from here to the camera. Um, then I'm gonna add, Maybe what I'll do is get a little bit of this gray and white mixture with a little bit of black. It doesn't take much black to really make things dark. Okay, so maybe what I do is I kind of just come down like this. Kind of like that. Okay, so I wasn't planning on doing that much, but you see how one thing can lead to another? Literally, all I did was paint a square with an opening, add a paint in the opening and put an X down. Okay, like anybody can do that. That got me going. Then I thought, oh, I'll make these, these little marks. Then I'll take my, uh, this other mark making tool and scratch into it. Then I'll take my graphite and draw across and my charcoal, then I'll go around. You see how one thing leads to another? So you might start with a circle, you might add a triangle, you might scribble across it and paint in the scribbles. There's just a million things to do. I, I just wanted to show you this, because not that I'm wanting you to, to make art by formula, what I'm, what I'm hoping it, it does is it spurs you on when you're in a place where you're feeling stuck, when you're feeling like, I just don't even know where to, go or I now see I can't stop I want a little bit more here um, that you can reach for something and with confidence say oh I'm just gonna put these random colors down I'm gonna kind of mess around and play with them till I get a color I like I'm gonna paint a square I'm gonna paint inside and I'm gonna put an X in the middle okay don't laugh and that's what I'm gonna do today 
and yet it feels so good. I mean, uh, I, I, yeah. So find a way to trick yourself into beginning to make art if that's what it takes. Because I don't know why it is that the one thing that we love doing is so hard to begin. And so if it takes tricking yourself, if it takes a quick formula, whatever it takes, I hope that you find that thing for you and that you continue on on your creative journey just one step at a time, one, one formula at a time. Anyway, thanks for watching and I really appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for your lovely comments and your kind words and I will uh, see you next time.